All right, hello, it's Sean. I've got a little bit of a layout update here for you and a little bit of an operating session. Everything you see, um, all of this track here, is all permanently attached. Um, that's down, it's final, it's running, it's working, it's wired, everything. Um, I have the gaps in here. I don't have the Kato Uni joiners in or Unitrack joiners in here. It's just lined up as closely as I can get it. This one's pretty much dead on. This one is really good. I'm really close. If I need to later on, I can always bend the rail a bit. But it works. I'm happy with it. Um, so what I'm going to do here real quick is give you guys an operating session. If I can get a good focus here, that's better. Alright, so... Um, obviously, this isn't finished yet. Um, and I'll have that yard in there. Um, so... I've got my Digitrack Zephyr system set up and after the video... I'll show you guys how I have it set up here with my flags and everything. Um, so without further ado, let's get moving. So I'm going to grab my switchy here, uh, 9213 uh, IHB SW1500, one of my favorite locomotives. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two, the second two auto racks and I'm going to put them in this siding here. So before I get to them, I'm going to flip the switches. And something to keep in mind is that these switches are power routing. And all the uh, power feeders are here, here, and then along on these four tracks over here. So that makes six, and then two more just next to the camera over there. So there's, if the switch is flipped, there's no power in here at all. And that's just something else to be kept in mind while operating. And for anyone who's uh, asking, I know there's been a few questions on Facebook posted on different pages and that. Um, for right now, the plan is... Oh, let me get this. Right now, the plan is that at least this track will continue on through both sides to the rest of the layout. Um, the outer track is going to be the second main line, and these two are going to be sidings, depending on how it works out. If I do that, I have to buy a lot more track for the uh, radiuses and that. We'll see what happens. I like the flow of this and the way it's looking. It's very nice. It's tidy. Um, so this I might just continue on a little bit. And then this I'll make definitely into a siding at least. Um, and then this I just may extend a bit more. But we'll see what happens. There's no deadline. There's no rush. I went through and cleaned the track a bit. But I think the wheels and locomotive are a little bit dirty. I just used an eraser because I can't find my bright boy. Go figure. So, and I've got a uh, local freight here waiting for me to get these two moved out of here um, so I can get that guy out and swap out a couple of cars. So I have to occupy the main line for a short period. I'd like to thank my buddy Rich for these again. They've, they've become a lifesaver for me. Um, huge help. They're just little kebab sticks. I gave a few to my friend Andy who... Uh, has overhead like I will on here um, hopefully soon I want to get the road in and some of the scenery in first and I'll see what happens I haven't decided what I'm going to go with I'm waiting for the stuff from Rents Relics I'm getting two South Shore overhead uh, catenary towers I'm going to see how those work and how those uh, will fit on the layout before I commit to buying any um, and before I decide on my catenary that's not a I don't have to do anything right now. It's something that can always be added later. And like I said at the beginning, after I'm done with this little switching operation to kind of give you a feel for how things are going to work out here, I'll go through and I'll show you around the yard a little bit. Not everything's set up the way I want it, um, but just to give you an idea of what's going to be where. My metric cars make it through here real well. Um, 
Obviously my freight train can go back and forth without problems. Um, I mean, everything seems to be working pretty well. The only thing I might have an issue with is power along these switches because of these plastic frogs. Um, and because there's no power continuing through here. So I'll find out um, if it's just a matter of some dirty track and contacts or if I'll actually need to drop feeders down here and drill small holes and just solder to the bottom of the rail or to the side of the rail or something, which isn't a problem. I can do that. Um, but that's something where the modules need to be separated to do and that's just a pain. So that's something that can be done later. Alright, so I'll drop these two off down at the end of the siding or the spur. Um, I'll come back around I'll grab the coil car and I'll grab two different cars or something or switch out and then I'll show you guys around a little bit. And just operating those... My coupler just fell off my gondola. That is interesting. Screws there and everything though, so we'll keep moving on. Um, but something with these flags is that it really helps clean the look up. You don't see a bunch of stuff stored underneath. Um, it looks a lot cleaner and it's really nice. It helps me uh, helps me focus uh, on the task at hand. So I like this idea. This is working out really good. Oh. Miss the switch. So I'll come back over here. Whoop. Yeah, I think there's just dirty track and dirty wheels. Not to mention the points on here are dirty. So we'll come up here, snag this guy. And then we'll pull this guy forward a bit after I get it figured out what I want to take off. I found these uh, road railers. I bought one at a swap meet this past weekend. Um, with these larger frogs, and being that they're a bit more spaced, perhaps, than a pico frog, um, there's larger tolerances on these switches than on the pico track, uh, that it bounces a bit more, and it has a bit more sway, so that's something to take into consideration when you're operating your layout. And something else that's nice with these throttles is you put it in neutral, and you're not going to move your locomotive by accident, and you can use it for switching. So you can give it some throttle, go reverse, pause, forward, pause, and then you can add in momentum too. I'm going to get a new chip for this guy with uh, the back EMFs for smoother for back EMF for smoother operation, and that'll help out with the switching. So we'll move this guy forward here, so it's in the view. Hopefully you guys can see this road rail. Let's double check that quick. Yeah, you guys can see it. So, got that guy uncoupled. There we go. Alright. Tucked in between the auto racks. Got the other controller. Um, what's nice about having multiple controllers and not using the, uh, the system, I have the Zephyr which is nice for switching, but this is really smooth too. You can go back and forth between locomotives without having to flip flop and you can take the controller with you. Um, I think they're like 45 or 50 bucks a piece with my discount plus a 10 or 15 dollar panel and right there for about a hundred, hundred and quarter I've got you know so much more maneuverability and utilitarianism to my layout and it's just it's really nice to have. Oop. Yeah, I think I need to clean my wheels and the track a bit more, get a good bright boy instead of just an eraser and maybe go over with some alcohol. I got some vodka I could use on there if that works. So 
So I don't know if they'll both fit in the siding over here, but we'll give it a shot. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that road railer hops in the frogs a little bit there. And it hasn't become a problem yet, but it, uh, it does wiggle around a bit. I also haven't decided whether or not I want to put in two, excuse me, um, two yard tracks or just the one and extend it and then that will give me actually a little bit more space and again save me, me, save me some money on not having to buy so many switches. That would save me 24 bucks in another switch. I just move this up here a little bit and then this would start off. I could actually make it a little bit longer. I mean, I really don't need two tracks going through there, it just get crowded, I think, so maybe I'll do that. So there's that. Pull this guy back into the switching area. Alrighty. That one's done. On to this guy. Now what's nice about with, uh, the layout so far is I can really imagine where things are going. I mean, I've used my imagine from, imagination from the beginning with this part. I had no plans. I just set stuff on the layout and it just kind of took off on its own. And I kind of like the look of having, you know, a single main line where the freight working around. I have I, this would become a siding here um, for running around trains and that. I just have a short siding there. And I think it would, that would work really well. I'd have a, you know, freight train sitting here and a passenger train, you know, coming around or something. Um, I think that would be really cool. So actually we'll take off forward here to finish our movement. So that's that. Um, that's just swapping out one car. Um, and there's a good bit of movement in there. I, that was, I like that. Um, another nice thing with these picks is that they're sturdy enough. If you hold down the switch, a Pico switch, you can use it on either the end points or the center, or if you're brave, use it on the um, points here for the switch and you can flip it without having it put on a ground through which can save money, time, and some frustration, especially if you have overhead. You don't want to be reaching in and I didn't want to be drilling holes in my unit track or even in the Cork road bed for like, putting in a ground through on the end of the layout and then going. Um, when the layout's all said and done, I'll have plexiglass on the outside of here, and especially for shows, um, for at the house, I'll probably just have a piece of one or two inch plexiglass, because there's no need to have your fingers and hands right up here, um, and that way it'll help keep you from, you know, bumping cars over, um, and then keep stuff from falling off. So like I said, just have one or two inches above the tabletop, that'll keep the auto racks from going down. And uh, at shows, I'd probably go with 6 inch just to help keep flying spatter from children um, and food and whatnot from their ever opening mouths. I've seen some kids at these shows and they just get crazy. So, without further ado though, I'll give you a quick little walk around about how things are looking right now. Uh, so, this is just temporary. This will actually come down um, to. Uh, track or roadbed level here and then um, the switch will come up meet up right at the joint and then that's where the piece of flex track will come up to right there I still might sand this down a little bit there's a little bit of a difference but it's nothing big I'm not going to worry about it um, I can take care of that with a shim or whatever uh, and then I said if I just put that one track in I think that would give me more than enough space in the yard it would open up the radius a little bit more so I don't have to curve that back in this could just come out smoother and then I'd have space down there for my auto racks um, I'm liking the way this is turning out so far I hope you guys do too 
Um, I guess that's about it for that part. I've got more trucks and equipment up. I've got a few more things out here I need to move in there. Uh, I will be able to fit a couple more cars in the yard. I got another piece of equipment there. Uh, and I need to find something to do with the steam engine for the moment because it is in disrepair. It does not run. I got it for free from Andy for helping him out. And uh, I just want to do something nice with it for now. Like it's sitting on some old rails in the weeds or something. And when I get it fixed, I can park it there and then put it back in the service and whatnot. Uh, next, for my DCC system, I've got my... Oh, all right. I've got, just got my DCC in a drawer here, just so it's out of the way. I'm just going to use my cabinet for storage at the moment, since it will not fit into the layout within the two feet, uh, two foot width that I have planned, which is fine. Um, that This actually may become my temporary mini bar, uh, depending on what I decide to do, because I do have locomotive and some boxes stored in there. Um, it's nice to be able to take stuff in and out without having to box it up every time for the locomotives. And then all those freight cars... Excuse me. It's past my bedtime. Um, all those freight cars are currently on the layout, as you can see, around. Um, but I would like to get a nice actual display case for my locomotives with the sliding glass and that. And then under my layout, which I don't know if you'll even be able to see, uh, I've got the little terminal strips here, the terminal blocks. I've got uh, nice little wire looms or whatever up here and then underneath it's just a wire going through. Not sure what I'll do. I'll probably install a plug um, like an automotive plug uh, for the wires between the layouts just for taking them apart and putting them back together. And of course I've got my UP5 panel with the data cable coming over here and then to the floor and then back up to my DCC system and then I just vertically installed my uh, cup holders for my throttles. So it's all working out pretty good. My, thankfully this hasn't caught fire. Um, if that does, that could be a huge problem because that would go up like a match. Um, and even with the way these are installed, it leaves just enough space for me to grab my chair. It's easy enough to get it in and out of there. And it doesn't open up a whole lot of mess. So. And then over here, easy access to my drawers, a couple of boxes, and then I've got my O-scale, um, my riding car, which has yet to be finished. All I need are axles, I've got couplers and everything else. Um, otherwise, I think for now, that's it. That's going to be 18 minutes, that's more than enough. So, like I said, hopefully I'll have those rinse relic stuff in soon. I have got the catenary towers and a shed coming. Um... So I'll have a review for those and I'll show you guys a video of me putting together one of the towers. Hopefully there isn't too much swearing. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, and until next time, take care.